Hi, my name's Matt and I'd like to welcome you to this Zindiac video which is part of our MSP 5th edition foundation training course. In this video we'll be covering the key concepts relating to programs and MSP. This video accounts for 5 out of the 60 marks in the exam or 8.33%. The first thing we need to understand is what is a program and on the slide there you can see the definition and you need to be able to recognize that for the exam. I've picked out the major components for you. A program is a temporary structure so there'll be a start and an end and programs can last a long time, they can last several years but they do come to an end so it's not business as usual which continues forever or as long as the organization continues. A program leads multiple interrelated projects and other work and it's through the projects that we actually deliver outputs. The program is responsible for outcomes and we'll cover that as we move through the course. Programs progressively achieve outcomes of benefit. So that's the key thing. We're not making change for change's sake. We're making change because we want to improve things, we want to gain the benefit and we do that through outcomes and we deliver them progressively so we don't just deliver them in one block, we'll deliver them progressively over time so that's very much as you would on an agile project where you're delivering at the end of, of sprints, in programs we deliver through tranches which are longer periods of time but it's the same, effectively the same principle. And uh, programs benefit one or more organisations. So very often programs aren't just within one organisation. They're benefiting multiple organisations. And even if the multiple organisations are within one greater organisation in terms of the way they're managed and the stakeholder relationships and the communications, it's important to recognise that how that affects complicates things when it's more than one organisation. MSP views programmes through three lenses and these are also the three lenses which are the, the key areas of the exam. So obviously this lesson is covering key concepts and there's five marks out of six day in the exam for the key concepts but the other 55 marks come from these three lenses the seven principles, the seven themes and the seven processes and uh, as we said by far the greatest proportion of the exam over 50% is focused on the themes that we can see there on the slide and as we go through the training course we will cover the principles first. We will then introduce the themes, we will then cover the processes in detail and then we will cover the themes in detail. If you prefer to cover the themes before the processes you are obviously able to do that. It's a pre-recorded online training course so you can cover it in any order you want but in our experience people understand the framework better if they cover the processes first before they cover the themes in detail. So we will have an overview of the themes before we do the processes but we cover the themes in detail and content that you need for the exam after the processes. So we've got the definitions there of a principle, a theme and a process. So the principle, a guiding obligation that is continually required to achieve value from program management and the key phrase there really is continually required. So it's not something we follow at the beginning or just at the end or when we feel like it we want to be following the principles all the time and we want to be following all the principles not just our preferred selection of them. A theme, an essential aspect of governance required to ensure that the program is aligned with the principles. Themes are collectively applied during the processes throughout the program life cycle. So again, very similar to the principles in that we want to apply them all the time. They're collectively ap applied and they're an essential aspect of governance and 
that's really the focus of program management is on that governance, on that control of the program. And obviously we'll delve into that in more detail when we cover the themes. And finally, process a structured set of activities that define the sequence of actions and their inputs and outputs to achieve a specific objective. So the processes obviously differ from the principles and themes in that they are a sequence of actions. So we're not doing each process all the time. We move through the processes in a defined sequence and each process has each process has inputs and outputs and each process is designed to achieve a specific objective. What is enterprise agility? So we need to understand enterprise agility for the exam, but also to understand really why we're using program management. So we've got the definition on the slide. A condition of an organisation that is able to be flexible and responsive to drivers in its environment. Program management enables enterprise agility, and this may also be referred to as corporate agility or organisational agility. So in, in simple terms, the organisation or enterprise has a strategy that we're following and maybe the world changes or the organisation notices an opportunity or a demand in another area and it wants to change direction, it wants to be flexible, it wants to respond to that change in demand or that new opportunity or change in its environment in some other way, it needs to change. How quickly, how easily is it able to do that? And that's what enterprise agility is all about. At the highest level of enterprises, of organisations, can we change strategy? Can we change direction? Can we change focus? That's what we're trying to do with regards to enterprise agility. Why do we want to use program management? There are four key reasons defined by MSP for using program management. And you can see them on the slide there. Innovation and growth, organisational realignment, effective delivery and efficient delivery. So they very much align with what we talked about in terms of organisational agility. So innovation and growth, you know, we've spotted a, an opportunity in the market or we have come up with an, an idea of how we can innovate in our market, grow our business. We need, in order to do that, we need to change. We need to manage and control that change and the delivery of those outcomes of benefit. And that's where program management comes in. That's where MSP comes in. Organisational realignment in the same way. We're realigning the organisation. It could be in response to mergers or acquisitions or divestments or a drive to restructure how resources are deployed. But again, we can use program management to control that and deliver those outcomes of benefit. And then finally, effective delivery and efficient delivery. So effective delivery, doing things better, delivering change better, delivering more outcomes of benefit, more beneficial outcomes, and efficient delivery, delivering more with the same. So be more efficient in how we deliver those outcomes of benefit, effectively doing it for a lower cost in terms of total resources. There are 10 common challenges that MSP is designed to address and they're shown on the slide. Insufficient support from decision makers in the investing organisation and obviously what MSP tries to do is ensure there is sufficient support. Unclear decision making, again MSP will try to ensure there is clear decision making. Unsustained focus on outcomes and benefits, so you've already heard me say outcomes refer to outcomes of benefit several times and obviously that's a key focus of MSP. Poorly defined, communicated or maintained narrative that supports the vision. So clearly what we want to do is communicate the vision, the story. Why are we doing this? Why are we undertaking this program? That's a key focus of MSP again. 
lack of clarity about the gap between the current and future states. And you'll certainly see a focus as we go through the course on ensuring we have clarity about that gap, about what the programme needs to deliver. Unrealistic expectations about the capacity and ability to change. And obviously what we will want is realistic expectations about that capacity and ability to change. Failure to engage and influence stakeholders. Again, MSP will encourage us to engage and influence stakeholders effectively. Complex dependencies, obscuring an integrated approach. So again, there'll be a focus on understanding those dependencies and making sure we have an integrated, coherent approach. Inability to influence the prevailing culture. And we will talk a lot about culture because culture is very important. What is culture? It's the combined behaviours of everyone in the organisation. If we want to change culture, we need to change people's behaviour. People's behaviour is influenced by their attitude. So if we want to change their behaviour, we have to change their attitude. And the ability to influence the culture is based on our ability to change people's attitude. And we'll certainly be trying to do that. And finally, difficulties in keeping effort focused at the right level of detail and obviously we'll be focused on trying to achieve that using MSP. What is the programme environment? We we've mentioned the programme environment. What is the programme environment? Well, it's shown on the slide here and there are four key components to the programme environment. And we can see at the top of the slide there, external context and uh, we can use PESTL, the acronym to help us remember political, economic, sociological, technological, legal and environmental factors that we have to think about. So outside the organisation, those factors that can affect the organisation. The next level down, the organisational objectives and we're always Focus on that. What is the organisation trying to achieve? What's the organisation's mission, vision, goals, objectives? And everything we do in the organisation, so obviously everything we do in a programme, has to relate back to that, back to those targets and make sure we're following the strategies, policies, initiatives of the organisation. The change priorities. Why do we need to change? We're not changing, as I've said before, we're not changing to change the sake. We're changing to make things better. So what are the priorities? We can't change everything. We have a limited capacity to change. So we have to make sure that the change we make is, is not just beneficial, but the most beneficial change we can make. That's what we're trying to achieve. The most beneficial change possible within our capacity to change. And finally, the internal context, the culture which we mentioned, and ways of working, power structures. So we have to understand those constraints really and work within them. So that's the programme environment. External context, organisational objectives, change priorities and internal context. And that brings us to the end of this lesson on the key concepts of MSP. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. You'll certainly find the content useful when taking the exam. Until you see me again, have a great day.